All right, folks, so we've got the car up on ramps now. I did take it down and I had to move it out of the shop for uh, something else I was working on, getting a windshield replaced on the blue Jeep. Uh, it was nice enough to let the windshield guy work inside here. It was a cold day here in Ohio. But uh, I got the car up on ramps today and I uh, haven't quite figured out this oil leaking issue. It's still dripping a little bit. You might be able to see it right uh, right there there's a little bit of a drip uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is yet I kind of know where it's coming from uh, but I'm not exactly sure why I did check the dipstick today and it's a little higher than it's supposed to be and uh, I think you know we're just gonna take a little bit of time here and drain the oil uh, and probably get this front end disassembled here because if we're gonna do that water pump uh, let's go ahead and get the cooling system taken apart the water pump will be here in a couple of days we'll get it put back together and then uh, we should be able to uh, see what's going on here so I think I'm going to go ahead and take the oil filter down see if it, that's where it's leaking from um, not really sure if that oil filter is right or not but we'll take it down get the oil drained out of this thing and see what's going on in general should be a pretty quick uh, drop the oil and check the filter kind of thing so give me a second here I'll get slid underneath there and uh, get the oil coming out Well, folks, uh, draining the oil out didn't see anything uh, obviously wrong. The oil's used; it's you know pretty dark colored, but uh, there's no water in it, which is good. Uh, that didn't come out first because oil's lighter than water, so water would be on the bottom of the oil pan. But uh, all of it came out just as fresh oil the whole way, or you know, motor oil, no water. And then I did drop the filter as well. The filter uh, seemed like it was especially full so I don't know if it's just the filter is just well used and plugged I'm not sure uh, but we're gonna get a new filter and oil in there pretty soon uh, if you saw my oil cash can I really suggest that people run one of these it's pretty nice because uh, you don't have to make a huge mess trying to pour it into an, another jug to take it back to the auto parts store or I've got a friend who uses the used oil for a heater in their shop so anytime I do an oil change I try to get the oil to him so he can heat his uh, shop up but uh, that little spout on the end makes it real easy to pour out the oil and uh, a lot less mess so All right, folks, well, I started looking at the oil filter up through the oil filter adapter housing, and I didn't see anything I liked. Um, so this is the oil filter um, house, housing adapter, and up through here, you can kind of see on the back side, you can see my fingers going through there. Um, I could see something up on the engine block I didn't necessarily like, so this sits in an orientation. How does this sit up there? I guess it sits like this. And up through uh, up through this hole right here, I could see some orange things that look like rubber bands hanging down. So I took that off. Uh, it wasn't too hard. It was about 
four or five 13 millimeter bolts to get that out. Here's the sealing surface for your oil filter, by the way. But then when I looked up here, I saw uh, this the rubber band looking stuff is actually this oil filter um, gasket stuff. And so I believe that's where my leak's coming from, from the oil filter, because the nut I tried to tighten before is, is this one right here, and I just wasn't able to get it tight enough. Um, so I think if we get this gasket off, it should just come off, but you can see that it's fell apart. And another part of it is right here. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the orientation, because it just fell off when I was, when I was trying to get it down. So I'm going to uh, pull this down here and see what else we got going on. So it should just pop off. Ah, and you can see uh, it doesn't look the best because this piece should be in here uh, somehow. Probably something like that. And that rubber is supposed to go all the way around the edges. But uh, it's not. So I think that's the source of the oil leak again because it's right here by the filter. So the filter, even if it was a little bit plugged, um, I'm not going to blame the filter, but you can see up in here uh, around this bottom here, the ceiling surface looks a little bit different colored. Uh, so I'm going to try to get this cleaned up and come up with a solution to put this back together. I haven't quite got an idea yet, but uh, I'll start thinking about it while I'm cleaning it up. So. Give me a few minutes to clean it up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, folks, so I got the oil filter adapter housing out of the car and I cleaned it up a little bit. That's why I got the toothbrush out. And I was trying to line up how this uh, filter adapter gasket went in here. And I think it went something like this. But what's really odd is if you look, it's got this nice triangular shape here. So this is like a four, uh, you know, it would be a cross shape. Now I'm wondering if there's just so much oil pressure going through here that it that's what broke this loose and uh, got this to leak. And then I was looking over here at this side and right here you can see this gasket is separating I mean really across the whole bottom there without pulling on it and that's where the leak was coming from. Now you could actually see before I cleaned everything up that there was a passage that basically went right from uh, this area of the gasket right to the bolt. So that's the bolt that I tried tightening up in the car But I wasn't able to get the leak to stop because the gasket had separated here or it was pulled in It was just leaking so I looked at the auto parts stores online um, And a lot of theirs are this triangular shape um, And the auto parts store is pretty close to me has one so I think I'm gonna go get it We'll compare it before we put it on but I think that's going to be a way to fix this leak because I'm pretty sure it's coming from this area right here. You can see the remnants on the exhaust pipe and everything from it dripping. And it's been dripping probably for a little while. But uh, you can see this gasket material, whatever this, uh, when you tighten this up, it would uh, tighten against the flange there to seal that off. But uh, I guess if everything came down to it, you probably could put RTV right around here and come around this middle part here um, in the block it doesn't really show this right here so I think you could just come around the outside and even if you wanted to put it right here and then just put it back on um, you probably could but uh, the gasket's not too expensive and I'd rather try to use the metal gasket because it does cause uh, create a better seal right here in the middle uh, so I, that's what I want to go for uh, go to the parts store, grab the part, and we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Uh, before we put it in, I'll show you guys what it looks like. But uh, it does look pretty promising that we can get rid of the oil leak, and then we'd just be down to the coolant leak. I really hate trips on my garage floor, so uh, the sooner we can get them sealed up, the better. Alright folks, you can see we got back from the parts store. Here's our new gasket. It does match up pretty good. It doesn't seem that it matters if I put it that way or that way. It's not going to really line up. I'm just trying to keep the slot lined up. So if I keep the slot lined up, it doesn't seem like it matters much which way it goes. But I'm pretty sure the original one or the one we took off was like this with the little extra part right here. 
So we're gonna try to mimic that when we, when we put it back in. And also, I really would have thought that these uh, extra braces for the gasket would have lined up with uh, this filter mount here, but they don't. So it's not like one of the, one of the ways that we put this on is going to make there be better flow. So I guess it doesn't matter much. So we're gonna try and get this put on. We'll see if we can't get this oil uh, leaking issue solved. All right, so I'm gonna to try to keep you guys here and I'll try to stay out of your way as much as possible so you can see how we're gonna put this up here. But you can see we've already got this uh, surface cleaned off really well. Uh, I'll take the rag one more time because it did, uh, as I went to the auto parts store, did leak down just a little bit more oil. There's not very much in there, but enough to create a little bit of a mess. We'll get it wiped up and it'll probably keep leaking until we're done. But we're just going to take this gasket and we're going to get it put up in here about like this because there's the, the slot goes that way because if we put the oil uh, filter housing up there that's kind of how it goes and then this plug right here is for your I think it's for your oil pressure so one thing you got to remember to before you even try to put anything in is put this bolt in down here because there's not enough room with this exhaust pipe up here to get that started so I'm going to go ahead and put that one in and just just start it just a little bit so we don't have to worry about stuff falling back on us uh, before I could get to this bottom one pretty easily so I'm going to try to put that one in too So that one's snug. Now I'll try to go back onto this second one I started. Because I know the first one I can get to pretty easily. I can see it right here with and I can actually get it going a little bit further with my hand. Alright, so it's started on my hand. And before I get much further and forget, I'm gonna plug in this oil pressure uh, switch. Not that it's super hard to get to, but it's just easy to forget about. Uh, these are all 13 millimeter uh, nuts and sockets that I'm using to put this on. So I'll get this one pretty tight. I'm not sure what the torque spec is, but uh, I can tell you that these are nice and tight compared to what they were before, or as tight as they were before. Uh, with the new gasket though, we should be sealing better. Now uh, I do have a couple more nuts left, and those are for a bracket that holds uh, the front edges of this. It just got shoved up here before, um, and it, it didn't fall out, so I just gotta bring it back into position, and I got... Yeah, it started on both the bolts. There's one here, and then there's one up a little bit higher. And I'm going to go ahead and put those nuts on. So again, it doesn't fall off on me. Put this one on, and then I'll get that second bolt nut started up there. But it may have to go on the socket and just ride up. You can see the kind of trouble you can get into using the battery one. And that even if you think you got it nice and square, you, you might be crooked and just not getting it through. So it doesn't hurt to grab a wrench and just do it by hand. It just takes a little more time. So now 
we've got the oil filter adapter back in and uh, we're actually ready to finish up our oil change one thing I really like to do on my cars is I like to write the drain bolt wrench size or socket size on it you can see right there I wrote 14 millimeter in two places I cleaned off the oil pan with the brake clean and then I just took a paint pen and wrote it on there and I also used the same kind of concept uh, on my oil filters I write the mileage that we're at and the date um, when I'm uh, changing oil that if you forgot for sure you can see when it was uh, so let me go set this down on a rag because I did write down the bottom that paint's drying or it's going to be dry in a second and I'm going to take a second and fill the oil filter up some because this oil filter goes in vertically uh, we don't have to worry about wearing as much oil it also gives me a chance to get a little oil on my finger and lubricate the gasket that seals up against the uh, oil filter adapter bracket that's up there so I got a little bit of oil in the filter got my writing on the filter as well and uh, go ahead and screw this on and you guys don't have to crank these down like you're some kind of ape or anything like that just uh, get them hand tight that's tight enough I'll take my rag and wipe off the oil because I don't want it to drip down later drip onto my floor or collect dirt if I don't have to let's get her all cleaned up there so there you can see we got the date and the mileage on the car today so that uh, there's no guessing later when I change the oil so now we'll go back to the top uh, you can see just for your verification that I got the drain plug back in so we'll go up top put some oil in the engine and uh, get ready to start it well you might also be wondering to yourself why did the guy choose STP uh, oil filter well I don't really care much about what oil filters on I figure just collecting the dirt that's all that matters and uh, today's variety of oil is going to be uh, STP um, 10W30 high mileage uh, this was the cheapest oil they had at the auto parts store and it's also the same oil that the previous owner was running so that guy must be a cheapskate like me as well but uh, I really hate changing oil around and the high mileage is supposed to be better to uh, protect your higher mileage uh, engine since we're over 100,000 it doesn't hurt to have a little extra protection so we're going to go ahead and get this oil in. Uh, capacity says the car should take 5.5 quarts. I just filled the filter up from this uh, 5 quart bottle. So I'll put the rest in, probably get it lowered down on a level surface, and uh, we'll check it for, for uh, capacity. I did buy a 1 quart bottle to get my half out of. So let's get this in here and see, uh, see if we can't get it started. thing I'm not excited about is that this engine must have been used in uh, I don't know a couple different things this is the General Motors 3.5 liter V6 and so when you put your oil cap on here and you tighten her up and you go to take it loose uh, sometimes the, this extension comes out so they must have used uh, this engine in a couple different applications because uh, you can see I you can't get your oil cap off without taking everything apart I don't know if there's a fix for that or not, but it's just, to me, a little minor, minor inconvenience. And of course, there is a beauty cover for it. I have it, uh, but I just traps heat a little closer to it. And when this comes off, then you gotta fiddle around with it, so. Well, I just gave a look underneath the car. There's no puddle of oil or no drops coming from the same area we had before. So it's always encouraging that after you do a repair like this. But one tip I wanted to give you guys, uh, besides just doing an oil change, is that if you do these ramps, I know they're not everybody's favorite, 
but if you take these ramps and you find a crack in your concrete, you can put a piece of metal in here. I just have a piece of angle iron in here, and I marked it with uh, ramp stop so I don't forget and use them for something. But now, when we're trying to put this up here, whether you have a four-wheel drive or a rear-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car, now these ramps don't try to slide forward when you're trying to get on them. This is a little tip I kind of came up with myself. But uh, it makes it a heck of a lot easier, so when I try to load this car back up on the ramps, you know, these ramps aren't going to try to slide if I hit them. Uh, they're stuck here on the concrete. Now, I know that doesn't help them with going away, but it might be something you can use in your garage if you've got cracks lined up uh, close to where you put your ramps anyways.